Carlos Ramirez, owner of NBS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. So it's been a pretty cool week. Um, had three gentlemen come out from Indiana to get their bikes worked on. Um, it was uh, Dwayne Stamper, John Smith, and Brad Hicks. So um, we'd done some work for Brad and Dwayne last year, or earlier in the year. Then, um, you know, it's never enough with the audio. So they wanted to make some adjustments and uh, go bigger with the builds and do a retune. And this time they got John Smith to come along with them. Um, they took the 15 hour ride to New Jersey and trusted us with their bikes. Um, we got them done in three days. So uh, put three techs on the bikes so we can get, so each bike had its own tech. And then uh, I came in and tuned all three bikes. Um, it turned into a, a learning lesson, a, a teaching lesson because um, they were trying to get a certain sound, but they wanted to use stock saddlebags. So there's only so far you can stretch a, so a stock saddlebag as far as sound, no matter how much fiberglass you apply, no matter how big of a port you go with, there's limitations. So he, uh, Dwayne wanted his bike to play lower, ended up playing louder. I explained to him because of the positioning of the port, so we, we chose between the two different sets of bags that he had and went with the set that gave him the sound that he liked the most. But um, he realizes that he's gonna have to go with aftermarket fiberglass saddlebags to get the sound that he really wants. He doesn't want stretch bags because he rides a lot and he doesn't want to take away from the performance of the bike. It's bad enough that they added weight to the bike with audio. He wants to be able to lean and turn and ride a passenger. He doesn't want his bike to be a trailer queen. So we came up with a game plan for that. But having what we had to work with, I think all three bikes sounded phenomenal. All three bikes sound different because the bags were a little bit different on each bike and all three bikes ran different woofers, but they all had similar power. Um, each bike sounded really, really good. They just sound a little bit different. So um, it's, it's uh, I think we made each client happy. We were happy the way it sounds. We were able to teach them the limitations of the bike. We were able to teach them how to play the bike. On um, Brad's bike, we had to rewire. It was done by a previous shop. They wouldn't give him the password to the DSP. So we had to erase the DSP and start over. Um, I don't think it's fair when you don't give the client the password to the DSP because it's not your vehicle. The, um, even if they paid for it, it's their equipment. They should be able to tweak and adjust and have somebody go over the tune. Um, we always give the client's password if they ask for it. Um, if you blow something up, then it's on you. It might impact your warranty. But at the end of the day, we feel that if we explain to the client exactly how to use it, why we did what we did, and if science is on our side, the clients are going to agree and they're not going to play with it. So um, uh, the install was pretty solid. We weren't we weren't in complete agreement with the previous shop on how they wired it. Uh, I won't get into that because a lot of this audio stuff, we don't sell, and people don't realize, we don't sell amps and speakers. We sell a certain sound. People like the NVS Audio sound. They like our warranty, they like our reliability, they like the way we do stuff. So there's different ways to provide a sound. The other shop had a way that they wanted to wire the bike, which gave them the most RMS wattage per speaker. To us, wattage is less important than staging. So um, we rewired the bike that way we had left and right. They, they wired it mono. So the way that they wired it is uh, on the 2404 all the tweeters on one channel, all the sixes on one channel, and all the eights on one channel. And then the tens had an amp to themselves. We rewired it, which gave us left and right front stage. And the reason that's important to us is we can adjust the face and it's just easier to tune. Music is recorded in stereo, so I like to send most of my bikes out in stereo. That way the music is reproduced. But that's, 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 the bike was wired safely perfectly cleanly it's just the other installer has a preference and i have a different preference the bike sounded really good both ways but um um i think brian liked our sound a little bit better and then i gave him access to the dsp i gave him a custom password and gave him the password that way if he goes home 
and he's riding the bike and there's something he feels that he needs tweaked, I can walk him through it over the phone. Um, some some people just take this a little too serious and they think that it's a huge secret and they don't want people looking at their tune and it's not that serious. It's motorcycle audio. Um, at the end of the day, it's about making the client happy and delivering a solid product that the client could enjoy. Um, John's bike came out awesome. Uh, John's bike was a uh, clean slate, fresh build. So we had been talking for weeks on the phone back and forth um, about equipment choices and what I recommend and why I recommended it. So he made his choice and that's what we went with. So um, all three bikes are similar, but all three bikes are a little bit different. They're all six speakers bikes. Um, Dwayne's bike has the most equipment on it because he's been playing with his bike the longest and he likes his extra, extra bright. So the tweeters were a little bright for my personal taste, but it sounded good and there was no distortion. So we tweaked it to his taste. Um, he's also running the most power. Uh, his bike has uh, 25 millimeter horns in the vent holes. Cicada CH in the fairing. Uh, 35 millimeter horns underneath the radio. 25 millimeter horns in the saddlebag lid. Um, coax eights in the saddlebag lids and coax six and a half in the fairing. Uh, separate amplifier for the tweeters. Uh, Kyle was able to shoehorn that in the fairing since it was already a vent delete. Um, 2400.4 and a 3000.1 all squeezed in the fairing. That was not fun. And, uh, Cicada 10 inch mid base on fiberglass sealed imported stock bags. On Brad's bike had uh, KB10s sealed imported stock bags. Um, his bike has a tour pack, so it was a 3000.1 in the tour pack. He has a 13 and down street glide. Um, coax horns in the fairing, 25 millimeter horns in the saddlebag lids, 25 millimeter horns in place of the gauges next to the radio. And he had an aquatic radio, which is a really good radio, but um, he wanted something a little more up to date, so we upgraded to the Soundstream radio for the street glide. Uh, he had a 3000.1 in the tour pack and a 2400.4 in the fairing, um, HK Mini DSP. And uh, John's build, everything in the fairing, we ended up running a 1200.4 and a 3000.1. Uh, we did coax horns in the fairing, coax horns in the lid, 25 millimeter horn in the lid, and also 25 millimeter horns in the fairing in the vent to lead tweeter pods hkm mini dsp factory harley radio flashed Just same thing we did in, du in duane's bike factory radio flashed um everything wired with oxen free copper wire um on all three bikes we upgraded the feed from the battery to zero gauge and we also did a zero gauge upgraded ground um, so Dwayne runs a foundation, you see it in the background, it's, uh, look twice, save a life. So they have reflective motorcycle clothing. I don't know if you could see it in the video, but, uh, you could see it at the uh, night. It's super reflective, nice thick material. So go over to the Facebook page and, uh, give them a follow, uh, buy a shirt or two to show support. They have men's, women's. It's Look Twice Save a Life Foundation. It's on Facebook. Um, I'll put a link in the description too. So uh, here's a few pictures of the build. Um, thank you guys for trusting us. They left last night. They should have gotten home around 7 o'clock in the morning this morning. I got a text from them letting me know they were home safe. But uh, it was an absolute pleasure. It's a great learning experience. I was, I'm just glad I was able to share my knowledge with them and show them why we do what we do. Got to have lunch a few days in a row and um, it turned out to be a good trip. It was worth it for them. It was great for us. And uh, thank you guys for trusting us. Check out the build.
Rushing into it anyway, you know what I'm saying? You ain't rushing for love, and I ain't up here to judge, so let's neglect the what ifs and make it do what it does. Let's get it. Is it bad? Thank you. 
with that head, you can smoke a fire bag, yeah, aggressive, got money, y'all can pass it, and trash it, I'm a big time, a nigga, yeah, pull the trigger, yeah, a player, hit a flipper, yeah, where it feelin', yeah, I'm a slangin' boy, yeah, out the hood, yeah, better be on the street, peace up, peace up, A-Town, that's it. Rushing into it anyway, you know what I'm saying? You ain't rushing for love, and I ain't up here to judge, so let's neglect the what ifs and make it do what it does. Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. These gentlemen travel 10 hours from Indiana to New Jersey to get the audio upgrade on their bikes. Are you guys completely happy with the sound? 100%. Absolutely. Love mine, baby. Thank you for trusting us. <laughs> 